Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. LEGO today officially revealed a set that was already officially revealed by Peugeot yesterday and sold in some stores in Canada a week ago. So, this might not be groundbreaking news for all of you, but here is the 42156 Peugeot 9X8 hypercar in all its official glory. Yes, I already have the box here with me and no, unfortunately I can't open it with you just yet, but I will use the usual high resolution photos today to go over the visible features, possible new elements and speculate a bit about the things we can't see. Here is the car on the front of the box, it seems to be mostly dark bluish grey with lime accents. The usual black background of the 18 plus sets has a green glow this time, with a green ribbling at the bottom. This is an officially licensed set from Peugeot, you can see the Peugeot logo in the corner and the Le Mans 24 hour race logo up here. On the back of the box we have again some reminders for the licensed partners, then we can see the rear of the car, which looks pretty cool by the way. Here's a photo of the real deal, the dimensions in the middle, the car will be 50 cm long, the same length as the Porsche 911 RSR, so we can assume that it belongs to the same 110 scale range. The following section describes some features that, of course, belong to the real car and not to this one, and we can look at the LEGO model from a different angle. Peugeot already published some of these photos yesterday and I was quite surprised at first sight because the grey of the elements seems to be much lighter than the grey we could see on the box. So, is this dark bluish grey or light bluish grey? For a few minutes I was really unsure, especially when I saw photos like this one from the side or this one from above, but I think it's the result of some unfortunate lighting and post-processing because the car is supposed to be dark bluish grey for sure. What do you guys think of this? What shade of grey is it? Let me know in the comment section. And if we want even more confusion, then let's take a look at the press release. As it says, the real-life four-wheel drive hypercar's electric-powered seven-speed transmission has been replicated in precise scale in this new model, which also sports the hypercar's unique doors, low-emission hybrid powertrain system, powerful suspension and elegant profile. Fantastic details such as the V6 engine and the glow-in-the-dark light elements truly capture the thrill of racing. Ok, so does it really have a 7-speed LEGO transmission in a 110 scale Technic car? That would be a great achievement, but unfortunately I don't think that's really the case. Maybe there is a brick-built representation of the gearbox somewhere in there, but I don't think LEGO would put a functional gearbox in a car like this and wouldn't highlight this on the box. Speaking of the glow-in-the-dark elements, the headlights look really cool and the fluorescent bars go well with this model. Now let's see what else we get. Wheel arches with curved top in dark bluish grey, I think this is the 13 module long version like the red ones in the Ferrari 488 GTE. Many of the new small panel fairings appear in this color, like this one here at the front, or this one here in front of the wheels. I had to double check but the long number 5 and 6 panel fairings are also new in dark bluish grey. Unfortunately, these curved panels are black on the sides, which means that one of the key elements of the original Osprey is still missing in this color. These smaller panels above the doors are also new in grey, just like those quarter dome parts we saw on the Ford GT or the Firefighter plane. I think that was all the recolors I could find for the first sight, but as always, let me know in the comments if you find anything else. Now let's try to figure out the features. There are very few shots from the inside, so let's start with the things we can see from the outside. There is steering of course, and this time I think we have hand of gut steering and the functional steering wheel too. As you can see, the knob on the top is easily removable. It's still there in this photo, but it's gone in this one. As for the steering wheel, it's not visible in any of the photos, but there's a highly visible distracting gear right in front of the driver's seat. I have to assume that this is, hopefully, not the representation of the steering wheel itself. This means that some gearing was required from the wheels to the steering wheel to make this work, and the designers couldn't hide it better, but hey, at least it's functional. According to this photo, the doors open in a similar way as in the original, you can see both of them in an open position on the other photo here. I'm not sure if the front and the rear sections can be open since there's no photo for that, but based on the structure here in the front, I'm assuming this flat section opens. I do have one special photo however that wasn't released by Peugeot yesterday that shows some exciting internal parts. There's a lot to digest here, so let's start at the front. There is a differential and this is the new type that seems to be connected to a parallel gear behind it. The original car has an interesting four-wheel drive system, by default the V6 engine drives the rear wheels and the front wheels can be driven by a separate electric motor, so maybe we get some sort of symbolic representation here for that. 
The suspension is also interesting, apparently we get a pushrod suspension with a single heavy duty shock absorber. I'm really curious to see how this works in practice. And now for the rear end. Here you can see 4 of the 6 cylinders, and the fake engine is apparently driven by an old type differential connected to the rear wheels. But something is missing here. You know what? Yeah, right, the rear suspension. You could say that the shock absorbers just haven't been installed yet, but I'm not sure there's really room for them here. Do you see those exhaust pipes? Those are above the rear section, slightly sticking out, so there's not a lot of room here, and this section is already 5 modules wide, so I'm not sure where we could put the shock absorbers. Does this mean there's no rear suspension? That would be weird and cool at the same time, but here's my theory. The Peugeot 9x8 has a pushrod suspension in the front and a pullrod suspension in the rear. I'm not sure if a proper pullrod suspension can be done with LEGO parts, but that would require the shock absorbers to be connected at the bottom, which might be the case actually, since the entire rear differential sits unusually high at the height of the engine. This will be an interesting setup for sure, I really can't wait to build it. So, those were the things I found out about the set from the photos. I will wait until I have the final result in hand to share my opinion on the overall look and the specific details. At this stage I like certain angles, like this one, the vehicle looks pretty convincing, but other angles like this one just look weird. The lack of windscreen is very obvious here and the A-pillars are very far back and there's this big gap at the rear that has no business being there, at least as far as I know. Oh, I almost forget the numbers. The set has 1775 pieces, it will be available from the 1st of May and costs 200 euros or dollars. So folks, what do you think of this set? Do we need yet another 110 scale licensed Technic hypercar? Do you like the color scheme? The technical solutions we could see? Let's talk about it in the comment section. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon, including the full detailed building review of this set. See you next time, bye bye.